If I come to you and I ask you, who are you? What would you tell me? Anyone, raise your hand like a school child. Or bravely say, if I come to you and I ask you, who are you? Who are you? What's your name? Who are you? Ilani, listen. Who are you? Tony. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you at the back there? If your mother named you that, <laughs> please, sir. Trevor. <laughs> Trevor. If anyone comes up to you and they say, excuse me, who are you? If you get pulled over, over in a roadblock and they say to you, who are you? You take out your identification. You take out that little card or the little green book for those who are still living in the yesteryear. You take out that thing. You take out your driver's license. You take out some form of identity and you say, this is who I am. Here I am. This is me. You can identify me because I have a name. Because I am somebody, yeah, black and white. I've been registered as this person. So you have an identity given to you when your mother and father gave you your name, or your parents, or your grand, whoever, let's say mother and father. You know, it's unfortunately not always the case. But when you were given your name, you had identity. You are somebody. You were walking with this name. Then you went to primary school. You went to school, and things might have changed. I, I need to tell you, my whole high school career, or life, not career, life, my whole high school journey, I have hardly ever used my own name. Even teachers called me on my nickname. I had a nickname which... Is, is very bad. But I had a nickname in school. I didn't carry my own name. And to give you a little bit of a shock, Neil, Corey is not my name either. That's actually not my name. It's actually a nickname. So you all call me a nickname. But it's, it's because of my surname that my nickname, my, my surname is Cornelius. Really, that's my surname. And therefore, the, the, the abbreviation Corey was born. My father was also named Corey, although it wasn't one of his names either. I'm not going to tell you my names because it's a mouthful and it's no. It's my secret. But my whole life I've been walking around with a nickname. So technically, the people that was in school with me took away my identity. But the worst thing of it all, the bad thing is that they didn't take it. Because Miranda, no one can take your identity away. No one can take your name away. They can't just start calling you, hey, Harry. You don't have to answer to Harry because your name's Neil. That's who you are. Your identity is who you are. But I chose to live with that nickname. I gave up. And I started introducing myself as that nickname. And everyone introduced me with that nickname. And people just called me that. I started introducing myself after school in the police. I started introducing myself as Corey. And people started calling me Corey. And that name grew. The name grew. And after a while, that became my name. So by right, by right, by right, I gave my identity away. And I was living with a false identity. In other words, I am a fraud walking around on this earth. Because I have no identity. Because I am not who I'm supposed to be. I am not identifying with the name that I was given that is on my birth certificate, that is on my ID, on my driver's license, on my police ID, on every single document that I own. My real name is there. Whatever, whatever, Cornelius. My rechte name is Gerardus Jacobus. Born and bred in South Africa. But I gave my identity away. So that made me something different. It didn't make me the person that I was. Let me tell you, it makes a difference if people call you on a nickname the whole time. It makes something. You actually become that thing. 
You become that someone else. And then what do I do? I decided, well, if I'm walking around with this nickname the whole time and people are calling me all these kind of things, then I'm going to start behaving like that. And my character, my identity, who I really was, was no more. So I was walking around with this nickname and I was drinking under this nickname and I was partying under this nickname and I was living under this nickname. And I was doing everything under this nickname. It was almost like when I gave my identity away, I gave permission for something else to step in. I gave permission for something else to come in, for something else to take over, for someone else to take over. And I started living an awesome life. Awesome. Man, I was drinking it up. I was partying it up. This Corey guy, okay, I don't tell you what the real, it's a pity. Is anyone pity? Sorry for that. This pity guy, he was living it up. He was going for all glory. And I was living in such a life of sin. And I thought that that was the way it was. I thought that that is what life was about. Lost life, lost bottle, lost car. Everything was just lost. Amen. Because Corey was not there. Pity was driving that seat. And I, for a long time, was fine with it. I adapted that personality of pity. Because that's what I have become. That's what I have become. Until the day I had to decide, and you've heard this story many times, I'm not going to repeat it, of how I gave my heart to the Lord, of what happened. And when I gave my heart to the Lord, I had to change. I had to change. I had to become again who I was. Or that's what I thought. So the day I gave my heart to the Lord, and I said, right, Lord, here I am, pity, here I'm standing. But for three times, pity ran that race. Pity was still going on. Pity was still drinking. Pity was still doing all those things that he wanted to do because he was not established, not planted. I was not rooted in Jesus because I did not know who I was. I was completely lost. I was like Moses in the desert. Just walking, just walking. There was nothing around me, no one around me. I didn't have a care in the world. I didn't care who I hurt. I hurt my own mother so much. Poor, poor lady. What she must have gone through. Unfortunately, I didn't grow up with a father. So the whole Father's Day thing was a little bit something to adapt to. But I hurt them so much. I hurt family. I hurt my best friends. I hurt my teachers. I hurt people that work, worked with me. Because pity was in control. That guy was jumping on a 750 cover going at 300 kilometers an hour and enjoying it. And the only time I slagged down to 200 was to get hold of the bottle. And then I would go again. Spiritually. On that motorcycle. And I wasn't know what was happening. I didn't care what was happening. I didn't know what my future holds. What the end result of my life would be. Because I am a person without identification. And then when I came to the roadblock, and the spiritual roadblock, and I stopped there. And then the, the angels asked me, who are you? The Holy Spirit said, who are you? Jesus cried, who are you? Father God said, who are you? That day, finally I had to look up. And I started scratching. But I couldn't find my identity. I couldn't find it. And I said, excuse me, give me one moment. And I was in the boot and I was in the car and I was on my bike and I was, had all these excuses. I was in my house cupboard and I was just, I could not find my identity. I could not find who I was. And then I gave my heart to the Lord. And it was the most gracious day of my life. It was amazing. I was running this new race. I was going, not on the bike, I sold the bike for a Bible. I sold the car for praise and worship songs. I was now running this new race at 400 k's an hour. I was going, I was going, man, I'm now a Christian, I'm running. But I still did not have identity because I did not know what I was actually doing. I did actually not know what I was doing, who I was. Because I was still running with the name Pity. It was still Pity running on this Christian journey now, this new thing in my life, but I was still running in the wrong direction. I still had no identity because I have not planted, rooted myself in the Lord Jesus. 
And now you ask, but man, I gave my heart to the Lord. Very nice, very well. I'll put up my hands first. Since I gave my heart to the Lord, since you gave your heart to the Lord, who has sinned? I'll turn around. Who, who has sinned? It is very easy to sin because there is a creature like a roaring lion out there who wants to deceive you. He wants to take your identity away. He wants to steal your identity. And people think when you preach about the devil, ooh, what is it? We need to preach. Jesus spoke, spoke about Satan so many times, more than anyone else, because you need to be warned about the dangers of that thief out there who wants to break into your house, take your ID. He wants to steal your identity. But I've said it now. I've said it earlier. He cannot steal it. We give it away. We give our identity away. I wanted to live that life. Yes, I'm now a Christian. But hey, 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 wait. I've still got this to take care of. But it's not easy to take care of. You know, I still need my one foot in the pub. Yeah, where's my... I still need my one foot in the pub. I am a Christian, but I'm still pity. You know, I'm still here. Lord, I'll only have one beer. It's not going to harm anyone. I'm only going to have one beer. Pity was still running. And I had to come to the decision in my life that I need to root myself fully in the Lord Jesus so that I can obtain and take back my identity, which I gave the devil. I gave the devil. And what does God say about sin? Romans 6, don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? I'll say it again. Don't you realize you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? Yes, but I'm a Christian. I, I, I do read my Bible. I, I do now and then pray. But hey, man, there's still this thing in my life. There's still this life. I, I, I'm not ready to be the side of the line. I still want to run here because I'm still pity. Corey's waiting for me over there. I know he's waiting. I know it can be achieved. I want to obtain it. But man, I still want to run with pity. I still want the devil to have my identity. You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death. You can be a slave to sin. You can give your identity to the devil as much as you want. You can give it to him. You can let him own it. You can let the world own your identity. Let that pub own your identity. Let those things that keep you, TV, whatever it is, own your identity. Or you can say, I will. Or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Now, now you're going to ask me, oh, okay, it's easy to say that. It's, it's easy to say I need identity. And how do you identify? How do I plant myself with God? Because the world has got so much to offer. I'm not ready to give it up. I don't think God wants us to give up everything. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he wants us to give up everything. But I believe God just wants us to have a relationship with him. We've spoken about this how many times? God wants a relationship with him, but we choose to give our identities away because we still want to live another life. We're like spies. On the one side, you serve God, but on the other side, you still live this life that you don't really want God to live with. Then you put Corey down, you put him down one side, you just lock him in the cupboard because pity just needs to come out now and then. I just need to let loose. Pity needs to run, man. Pity is a free thing. He's a free soul. He wants to run because Corey cannot always run. Sometimes Corey is constrained. He has to do what God wants. He has to obey the Lord. He has to walk this righteous little path. And it's not always lacquer because pity's path is lacquer. Pity has got all this room. He can do what he wants to. But Corey must walk on this narrow road. And yes, we obey. It's 
But it's not always that nice. So we put our identity back into the cupboard. And we take the other identity. We say, Lord, world, Satan, there's my identity. You can hang on to it for a little while longer. So how do we get our identity? Man, Jesus, who knows Jesus loves us so much. He loves us so much. He says in John 15, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. Jesus gave us the way. He says, look, in Revelation 3, I stand at the door. Jesus says, I stand at the door and I knock. Pity. Here's the door here. And he's knocking, and he's knocking. And Pity's saying, yeah, I'm coming. I'm just playing this game finished. Just give me one more minute. I'm just going. And Jesus is knocking, and he's knocking, and he's knocking. He says, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and share a meal together. So Jesus is knocking Debs, this morning on your heart, Jesus is knocking. He's busy knocking. He's saying, I need your identity. I want to identify with you. I want you to be one with me. I will not give up your identity. You'll remain Corey. You are who you are. But people will see you as a child of God. But pity this side wants to move on. Look, when, you, when, when, you, when you're a Christian, who knows? There's a target on your back. I mean... Do you not physically, you don't have any physical signs. Can you see I'm a Christian? You don't have any physical signs on you, but Satan can clearly see it. Because when you enter, when Jesus knocks, and you let him enter into your heart, there's something new that happens. You become a new creature, Neil. You become a new creature. Something must happen, man. The pity must fade away. You must want to get rid of pity. Now and then, pity knocks as well. Come on, open up. I need to come back in. But when you are rooted, rooted, planted in the Lord Jesus Christ, and pity knocks, then you won't even hear that door. Because you'll be busy with the things of the Lord. You'll be busy walking this road. And yes, you need to put on a new garment, man. Your old clear stunk because pity had a bad life. You need to put on a new garment. You need to put on a new being. You are a new creature. It says in the word, you become a new creature when you receive Christ. You are a new being, a new creature. Something has to change. You cannot live the old life. You cannot have the old ID. You must throw the old green ID book away and get the new card of Jesus Christ in your life. You must put on the new ID onto your person. When people see you walking in the street, Forgive me for this, but we can see other religions. Clearly, there they go. There they're walking because they've got a certain garment on. They've got a certain way of walking. They've got a certain way of talking. They've got a certain way of dressing. You can clearly see them. But people cannot see us as Christians. They cannot see us because we are not showing the world who we are. We are not showing them our identity. Jesus said, knock, man, I'm knocking, I want to come in. When you open your heart truly to the Lord, you say, Father, let the Holy Spirit in. I want nothing more to do with pity. That's my past. I want to burn him, get rid of him. I want a new ID. So when I'm rising, when I do climb in that car one day again, that spiritual car, and I go down the road, and I get to that roadblock, and the Father says, who are you? I can take out my ID card and says, by the blood of Jesus, I am Corey. I belong to you. And then God can see, wow, this is my child. But also the world, when they stop you in that same roadblock, and Satan asks me, um, who are you? Then you can proudly say, here's my driver's license. Here's my ID. You don't have to go and look for it. It's on you. You're wearing it. You wear it proudly. You say, here I am. I am a child of the most living high. Then your name, Trevor, can change from Trevor to son of God. Amen. Because then you stand with the son of the Lord. You are a child of God. You have a new identity. You need to get rid of your old self. You get your new, you get, uh, sorry, you need to get rid of your old self and get the new. 
You need to get the new. You need to put on that new garment. I just said to the youth yesterday, I was sitting here, and I'm going to ask the same question because, man, it happens to me a lot. And, wow, it's, that's Aina. When you're in a, in a circle of friends, non-Christian friends, and the topic of God comes up, how many of you actually feel a little bit guilty? You feel a little bit funny. You know, you feel a little bit ashamed, a little bit shy. So, oh, yes, these guys are talking about God. Oh, I better not let them know I'm a Christian. You know what? No, let them rather just carry on and mock Jesus' name. I'm rather just going to sit back and rather just <whistles> mind my own business. Because you don't have identity. Corey, you don't have identity. You have not been identified and rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you feel guilty. That's why sometimes it feels weird when you're at the supermarket and you hear people speak about God and other people laugh. You just, <laughs> you just laugh with him. <laughs> Peter betrayed Jesus three times. I'm standing here. I've betrayed God many times. Because if, instead of standing up, not fighting and grabbing my sword and chopping someone's ear off. Just standing up and saying, guys, I'm going to withdraw from this conversation. I'm going to withdraw from this party. I'm going to withdraw from this life pity. Because I stand firm. I am planted in the word. I am rooted. I have a new identity. Because Jesus knocked and I decided to open the door. I was on pity side, man. But when I heard the knocking, I put down the remote of that game. I walked to the door. I opened the door and I saw Jesus Christ. And he said, come in. And I decided, yes, Lord. And I stepped over that threshold. And I came in and I locked the door behind me. I threw away the key. The angel cemented to the door closed it is no more because I am now rooted and planted and I am an identified Christian because I walk in the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ yes you are going to hear this the devil knock as well many times but if you are planted if you have identity if you know who you are if you can stand strong I am Louise, and I am a child of God. I will not be moved. I am like a house built on the rock. The oceans can break. The wind can howl. I will not be moved. God will honor that. God will honor that, and people will mock you, and people will fight with you, and they'll point fingers, and they'll do all these kind of things, and they will try and break you down. But man, oh man, Neil, can you guys come up to the stage? Man, oh man, when Jesus says you are his child, then you are his child. When God says you belong to him, you belong to him, and nothing can move you because you are rooted, you have a new identity. So are you walking around with false notes and a false identity this morning? Or are you rooted and planted, want to be rooted and planted in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Because it's very easy to give up our roots. We look at, at Joseph. That's one of the most beautiful stories in the Bible. Joseph was a chosen son. He had everything. His father wanted him to be lectured. His father wanted to give him everything. Then his brothers gave him away and they sold him. And his identity was completely lost. But he stood strong. Amen. Joseph stood strong. He said, I will not bend. I will not falter. I will stand strong for the Lord Jesus Christ. And what happened? He was lifted up to the second most important man in the strange land. Why? Because he was rooted, planted. He knew his identity. He knew who he was in Jesus. He was standing strong. He was standing firm. Because he chose to be a new preacher, a new person. John 6. Forgive me. Romans 5, sorry. 5 verse 2. Because of your faith. Nothing else. Because of your faith. Christ has brought us into, a, into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. 
And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. I'm going to read it again. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place. Christ has, because of faith, helped us to step over to this place. You cannot do it alone. You need the blood of Jesus. You need to take a new identity. You need to go and fall in by the home affairs of heaven and go and fill in forms. You need to get an identity that you are a child of God, that you are a son of Christ, that you belong to Jesus. You have to have a new identity so that the Lord Jesus Christ can stand with you. The Holy Spirit can be with you and plant you in a place where you cannot be moved. A place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to the sharing of God's glory. You cannot get there as pity. When Jesus knocks, you need to step through that door. You need to go and fall in the queue. You need to become a child of the living God. You have to plant yourself, root yourself like a tree, and take up a new identity. So that when anyone in the world, the devil, whoever, comes to you and asks you again, who are you? Then you say, I am Lundy, a child of God. Ne? I am Cory. I am a child of God. I'm rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ. And nothing will, nothing, nothing will take that away from me. Because once you have identity, it cannot be taken from you. Hallelujah. Amen. So, if you are still hanging around, holding shoulders with pity, it's time that Jesus is knocking. Please kill the house lights. Jesus is busy knocking. I just know it in my heart. Man, Jesus is knocking, he's knocking, he's knocking, he's knocking on your heart this morning. So if you want to step out and you want to give up your old identity and throw it in the dustbin and burn that thing, if you want a new identity, then stand with me this morning. I'll stand up, I'll turn my back. I'll stand up first. If you want a new identity, if you want to be identified as a child of the most living high, if you want identity this morning as a new creature, as a child of God, then you stand up this morning and be recognized and say, Lord, I need a new identity. I am yours. I belong to you. I'm no longer in a dead world, in a dying world. I am a child of God say I say your name belong to Jesus I have a new identity everyone close your eyes man come on so Satan come on say Satan Satan, get you behind me. Get me behind me. Because I look forward. Because I look forward to God's glory. To God's glory. I am walking. I am walking towards victory. Towards victory. I am running the race. I am running the race.